I'm Tim Sandal, pharmaceutical microbiologist, back with you with the third part of our Annex 1 revision series and um, just happen to be playing around with um, a culture plate inoculation loop, uh, stainless steel type, not so common these days, um, not, not to be used for this under any circumstances but for the classic microbiological streaking technique. And microbiology is one of the aspects of the third part of the Annex 1 revision which is taking a look at clean room classification. Okay, hope you're all doing okay and are sitting comfortably. So we're going to do the third part of the Annex 1 revision and this is all about clean rooms. So let's have a look at what the Annex 1 is saying about clean rooms. At this point, we're just going to be looking at clean room qualification and clean room classification. So we're not going to cover routine monitoring, but purely what the Annex is going to be asking in terms of ensuring that a clean room is operating properly. So the Annex talks about qualification and here it's describing clean rooms and clean air equipment. And an example of clean air equipment is the unidirectional airflow unit, the rapid access barrier system, the RABs and isolators as used for the manufacture of sterile products. And the Annex is saying these should be qualified and classified according to the required characteristics of the environment. And by classified, this means that each manufacturing operation has the appropriate environmental cleanliness level in the operational state so that we're controlling and minimizing particular and microbial contamination of the product or of the materials being handled. So that's again a key distinction. So product protection is really important, but preventing materials from contamination is also really important. And to enable that classification exercise to happen, the equipment used should be qualified using appropriate methodology. And this appropriate methodology should be meeting the requirements of Annex 15 of the EU GMP. So it's really important to make sure that if this exercise is contracted out, that the clean room company carrying out this are also following Annex 15 and all of their equipment has been appropriately assessed. OK, so in terms of what to qualify, the Annex is saying that you need to ensure that HEPA filters are functioning correctly and have been installed correctly. So that's about filter leakage testing. And as we found out last time, that's not just the HEPA filter media, but all the surround and seals and gaskets and so on around the filter. And also to assess the filter integrity by integrity testing. We need to understand the airflow measurement. So that's the volume of air coming into the room and the velocity that it's coming into the room. And that links to the air change rates as well. We need to understand the air pressure difference, particularly between two different rooms. And here we need to have an understanding within every clean room of the airflow direction and a idea of the route the air is taking through a visualization study. We need to classify microbial airborne and surface contamination. We need to understand temperature and humidity profiles. We need to know that the clean room can recover after a contamination event. And specifically with isolators, then we need to have a containment leak test as part of that qualification exercise. And in terms of what to classify, clean room classification is based on the air cleanliness and air cleanliness is defined by the concentration of airborne particulates as measured in a cubic metre of air. So it involves measuring the non-viable airborne particulate concentration. And you know from a previous video, we talk about particulates rather than particles. And all this needs to be conducted. And the ISO requires um, that we classify as 0.5 and greater microns for B, C and D. But EU GMP Annex 1 says we also need to classify for 5 micron particles as well. 
And for grade A, there needs to be a risk assessment that should form part of the contamination control strategy that says, is another particle size other than 0.5 required? A larger particle such as one micron. In terms of how to classify, there is an as-built step, which is for a newly built clean room, but assuming that we're dealing with an existing facility, then there are two operational states that we need to assess. And this is at rest and in operation. And for that exercise, we need to use a number of particle count locations and the ISO 14644 standard will guide us for that. But the annex says for grade A and grade B, we often need to go beyond what the ISO standard is requiring and add additional locations for critical areas like point of fill and stopper bowls for a conventional kind of filling area or inside an isolator. And we need to justify those through a formal documented risk assessment. And for the at rest, there's this requirement to carry out a recovery test and that involves elevating the number of airborne particles to a level beyond the class limit for the room and tracking how long it takes to go down to at rest. And often the procedure is you do the recovery test, then you do your at rest qualification and then move into in operation qualifications. Air is also important for the clean room classification process. So for unidirectional airflow systems, the speed of the air supplied needs to be justified in any qualification protocol and the location at which airspeed measurement for the incoming air is recorded needs to be justified and that airspeed coming in should be of an appropriate speed so that we can achieve appropriate unidirectional airflow movement and get appropriate protection of product and open components and so on and also so that when we get to work in height which is often defined as just above the height of an open valve, for example, then this is a homogeneous airflow and it is between 0.36 and 0.54 unless otherwise justified. It's also important that temperature and humidity are controlled and considered and these must be controlled for grade A and for grade now, there are no specific ranges described in the revised annex, but these need to be appropriate and defined by the contamination control strategy because variations in temperature humidity can impact upon air movement. And also they're important for operator comfort. And if operators get too hot or too sweaty, then the ability of the clean room suit to contain contamination is going to be compromised. There also needs to be a microbial assessment as part of the classification exercise, and that needs to be conducted at rest and in operation. The sample locations need to be determined by a risk assessment, such as HACCP, hazard analysis, critical control points. And it should include um, saddle plates. Um, and the saddle plates are exposed for the duration of the operation or changed every four hours whichever is necessary for grades A, B, C and D. There need to be active air samplers, there needs to be contact plates, and if we're going to use rapid microbiological methods, then we should have an understanding of whatever the unit of measurement is for the rapid method can correlate with the classic colony forming unit. So we have an idea of microbial recovery and contamination levels. And a big change to the annex is that there's no longer a numerical value for grade A. Grade A is now defined as no growth, which is designed to fit in with the rapid methods and also the expectation that microorganisms are not recovered at grade A. An important extension of, the, of this classification exercise is that the locations for routine monitoring should bear some resemblance with what was used for the classification exercise. In terms of how often all of this needs to be conducted, well for grade A and B the maximum time interval is every six months and for grade C and D the maximum time interval is every year. 
but of course the annex allows that to be done more often and it also describes situations when reclassification should be conducted such as we change the design space in the room and put it to a different use or we change HEPA filters or we make some other change to the heating, ventilation and air conditioning, the HVAC settings. And in grade A, if there's anything done that changes the air movement or if we were to make an adjustment to the airflow velocity. And the requirements for this reclassification must include the assessment of the concentration of airborne particulates. And that's important because that is the measure of airborne cleanliness. Integrity testing of the HEPA filters, the terminal HEPA filters. Airflow volume measurement, because we still want to know that the air being supplied hasn't deteriorated, so we're still getting the air change rates that we desire. Verification of air pressure differentials. And for grade A, the airflow velocity test. And we also need to conduct the microbial classification element as well. And again, this is applying to at rest and in operation. So there's lots of things that need to be done every six months or once a year or if we change something critical. So there needs to be time in any production schedule to allow those operations to take place. Okay well thank you for watching. I'm Tim Sandal and this was the third part of our Annex 1 review and I'll be back with you with the next part of the series quite soon where we'll be looking at cleaning and disinfection. So until then, cheerio bye.